This is the lecture on mood disorders. Severe emotional, cognitive, behavioral, and physical symptoms of depression with a history of one or more major depressive episodes and no history of manic or hypomanic episodes characterize major depressive disorders. At least 60% can expect to have a second episode. Major depressions may be diagnosed with a specifier, such as psychotic features, catatonic features, melancholic features, postpartum onset, seasonal features like seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, or atypical features. A depressive syndrome frequently accompanies other psychiatric disorders, such as schizophrenia, substance abuse, eating disorders, anxiety disorders, and personality disorders. Depression is high among people with medical disorder as well. Dysthmic disorder is mild to moderate symptoms of depression experienced over most of the day, more days than not, for at least two years. Hospitalization is rarely necessary and age of onset is from early childhood to early adulthood. Always evaluate the patient's risk for harm to self or others. Also important are a thorough physical and neurological exam, the patient's history, current medications, and evaluation for other psychiatric disorders is important. The nurse must assess family and significant other support to help with education and referrals. A number of standardized screening tools are available, the Beck Depression Inventory, the Hamilton Depression Scale, and the Zone Depression Scale are the three most common, but there are others as well. Included in the depressed mood are anhedonia, anxiety, psychomotor retardation, poor memory and concentration, feelings of worthlessness, helplessness, guilt and anger, and vegetative signs like change in bowel habits, eating habits, sleep disturbances, and disinterest in sex. Here are a few nursing diagnoses for depressive disorders. Three phases in treatment and recovery for major depression are conceptualized as the acute phase, which is 6 to 12 weeks, includes psychiatric management and initial treatment. The continuation phase is 4 to 9 months and includes treatment um, to prevent relapse. And the maintenance phase, one or more years, is continuation of antidepressants to help prevent relapse. Education is very important. Helping patients and families to understand that depression is a medical illness is the goal. You should include milieu therapy. Hospitalization is necessary for acutely suicidal patients to regulate medications or, when indicated, to provide a course of treatment. Support groups may also be helpful. Antidepressants can positively alter poor self-concept, degree of withdrawal, vegetative symptoms, and activity level. It may be necessary to take antidepressants for one to three weeks or longer before a response is shown. SSRIs are the first line therapy, but other medications include atypical antidepressants, tricyclic antidepressants, MOIs, St. John's wort, and multiple other therapies. Bipolar disorder is a chronic mood syndrome which manifests in recurring mood episodes. Bipolar 1 disorder is at least one episode of mania alternating with major depression. Bipolar 2 disorder is hypomanic episodes alternating with major depression. Cyclothymia, hypomanic episodes alternating with minor depressive episodes at least two years in duration. Periods of normal functioning may alternate with periods of illness. There is no cure, so patients and families require support and education to reduce relapse and increase their quality of life. Mood disorders are likely the result of complex interactions between neurotransmitters and hormones. Regions of the prefrontal cortex and medial temporal lobe have been implicated in pathophysiology of bipolar disorders and have the neural circuits surrounding these areas. Early diagnosis and treatment can help individuals avoid suicide, alcohol, substance abuse, marital and work problems, and development of medical comorbidities. The euphoric mood associated with bipolar illness is unstable in a mood disorder. 
Over joyous mood may alternate with irritability and belligerence. The person laughs, jokes, talks with uninhibited familiarity, is enthusiastic, and may concoct elaborate schemes to get rich and acquire unlimited power. The person may give away money and gifts, have lavish parties, and spend money freely. Their behavior is during mania that patient starts many projects but finishes few. He or she is hyperactive, moving, uh, moving rapidly from one place to another. There may be indiscriminate spending, foolish business ventures, great generosity. He or she may be sexually indiscreet, manipulative, fault-finding, profane, and adept at exploiting the vulnerabilities of others. The person is often too busy to sleep, eat, or rest. Non-stop physical activity and lack of sleep and food can lead to physical exhaustion and even death if mania is left untreated. Colorful, inappropriate, even bizarre dress and overdone makeup are seen. The patient with mania is highly distractible and has poor concentration. After mania, the person often emerges startled and confused by the shambles of his or her life. Flight of ideas is accelerated speech with abrupt changes of topic usually based on understandable associations or play on words in, um, is common. Rapid speech, vulgar, loud language may manifest. Themes revolve around grandiosity, extraordinary sexual prowess, brilliant ability, and great artistic talents. Grandiose delusions of persecution may be seen. The person has poor concentration and attention span and is distractible. At the farthest point on the continuum, speech may show clang associations, which is the stringing together of words because of the way they sound, like rhyming. Speech may become disorganized and incoherent. Six important points are spelled out in the assessment alert for bipolar disorder. First, assess danger to patients or others. Then protect patient from consequences of overgenerosity. Assess for need for hospitalization, medical status, for coexisting conditions needing special intervention, and assess patient and family understanding of the bipolar disorder, the medications, support groups, and other teaching needs. Here are some nursing diagnoses for bipolar disorder. Some nursing interventions include, again, milieu therapy, support groups, health teaching focuses on information about bipolar illness, the importance of medication compliance, symptoms of impending episodes, and the importance of regulation of sleep patterns, meals, and exercise. Medications include lithium, is the anti-manic drug of choice used as a mood stabilizer. It's effective in reducing elation, grandiosity, flight of ideas, irritability, manipulativeness, and anxiety. Anticonvulsant anti drugs are useful for patients who do not respond to lithium or who cannot tolerate lithium. Carbamazepine or Tegretol may be used in conjunction with lithium or separately. It works well with rapid cyclers and with those manifesting paranoid thinking. Anti-anxiety drugs include clonazepam and lorazepam, and they're effective in managing psychomotor agitation that's seen in mania. Now, older adults who develop late-life mental illness are less likely than young adults to be accurately diagnosed and receive mental health treatment. Issues like depression, memory loss, and prolonged grieving are not a normal part of aging and should be diagnosed and treated. Depression is often confused with dementia and may go unrecognized. Depression is treatable. Symptoms of depression in the elderly include changes in sleep patterns and insomnia, change in eating patterns like loss of appetite, weight loss, excessive fatigue, alterations in mood, and feelings of insignificance. Depression can be caused by drugs or metabolic and endocrine diseases as well. Research, research has shown that older adults who commit suicide suffer from the most treatable kind of depression but do not receive needed mental health services. The suicide rate for the elderly is higher than for any other group. Depression accounts for up to 70% of late life suicides. 
push pause and watch the video, How to Recognize Delirium. Delirium occurs secondary to a general medical condition, is reversible, and causes fluctuations in consciousness and changes in cognition, which develop over a short period of time. Dementia is usually of the vascular or Alzheimer's type. It is characterized by long-term memory loss, disturbances in executive functioning, and this is irreversible. The elderly who manifest mental problems are treatable and responsive. Nurses can listen, do crisis intervention, use empathetic understanding, encouraging of ventilation of feelings, establish emotional equilibrium when anxiety is moderate or higher, and explain alternative solutions. Counseling assists the patient to talk about their present problems in individuals or group therapy. And major tasks for the nurse are to assist the patient in adjusting to the environment, keep the patient safe, minimize the effects of hospitalization on functional capacity, provide reality orientation, and engage in therapeutic communication. And that's the end of this lecture.